Hey guys, Lost here, and I was doing some thinking, and I realized there have been a few mods in Arma's history that have really affected the Arma community, as well as they bring a lot of content to the table. So here are five huge mods that I've played in Arma 3, and hope you guys enjoy. So starting off at number 5 is a fairly new mod that only came out in the last couple of months. That is the Unsung Vietnam War mod. I've seen a lot of positive feedback in the Arma 3 community. Some history about it, it was originally made back in Arma 2, where it was then ported over to Arma 3 about a year or two ago, and it's finally gotten some updates, started moving along, and it's been a lot of fun to get to play. If you couldn't tell already, this mod adds in all of the weapons, gear, vehicles, everything from the Vietnam War era, not only from the United States, but from other countries that were involved too, into Armor 3. The mod is currently in beta stage. It was released in alpha on Armor 3 just a few months ago before it was finally pushed to beta, so they are definitely working on this mod. It's not something that's just going to be thrown under the rug and forgotten about. It's got a solid team working on it, and I see a lot of more better things for it in the future. The Vietnam War was a pinnacle point in the world's history not only for the United States but for many other countries around the world and this mod captures it fantastically. It absolutely makes you feel like you are in the Vietnam War with the two maps that it brings to Armor 3 on top of everything else and all the add-ons that it adds as well. I want to bring attention to the two maps that it brings to the game, which is Da Krong and Dong Island. I'm not going to pronounce the rest of it, but they are definitely some of the biggest parts of this mod. The creators of this mod definitely go to some lengths to make you feel like you are immersed in the surroundings, especially with these two maps where there is just vegetation and trees as well as rivers that run through the maps that make things look absolutely amazing. Here's a quick look at some of the hundreds and hundreds of gear options that this mod provides. There's a lot of content and it will definitely go down in Arma's history as one of the best mods that has really been put out there. Up next is not really one mod but actually about four mods that are made by the same people that are meant to be used sort of together. And those are the mods from the Community Upgrade Project. There is one mod for maps, there is one mod for vehicles, as well as one for weapons and units that you can use. So basically the goal of the CUP mods is to bring in all of the content from the previous Arma games and all of the DLCs and put it into Arma 3. On top of that, it wants to give modders and mission makers the ability and the tools and the assets really to help improve the Armor 3 community with making missions and using all of this new content at their disposal to make Armor 3 as great as it possibly can be. If you will see over on the right what I'm scrolling through is all of the basically new content other than the individual pieces, but you'll see more about that later on in the second here, that they add into the game and the sheer number is absolutely outstanding. From the Blue 4, Op 4, Independent, as well as the civilians, and the objects that they put in the game, number in the thousands. There are easily over a dozen new terrains including Ramadi, Chernaris, and Takistan just to name off a few of the more well-known ones. The factions or countries as well number in over a dozen. Some of them include the United States Armed Forces, the British Armed Forces, as well as some Middle Eastern countries and guerrilla forces. The name definitely lives up to itself and it, they are easily downloadable off of Steam. In total, I believe there are six mods that come together. It's not one download, unfortunately, but they're super easy and quick to search up CUP on Steam and you will find all of them. So for number three, I was going to say RHS Escalation. However, I found out that the one mod, which incorporate two mods, no longer works. So you have to download the two mods separately, but it's still acts as one mod once they're both downloaded and run together. So 
So the two mods in the said one mod that no longer exists but kind of exists is the Russian Armed Forces and the United States Armed Forces that form RHS Escalation. If you didn't know, RHS Escalation won the 2014 Make Arma Not War Challenge, so this was a highly, highly rated mod in the community, and I have loved taking a look at it and playing every second of it. This mod adds in a huge amount of content for the two different militaries, and has been a mod that I have played, and I know a lot of other mods have used things from this mod in their own, just because there's so many resources available with these two mods put together. If you have mod at all in Arma, I'm sure you've come across this mod. It's a fantastic mod. So I am just scrolling my way through the virtual arsenal here, kind of seeing all of the gear that it provides. And not only does it provide weapons and gear, but it also provides a ton and a ton of vehicles that people can use, and it's awesome. I won't go into any super crazy detail since the mod kind of does speak for itself and it is also an extremely well known mod. I have reviewed both of these mods individually a long time ago so if you want to go check that out that would be super cool. If you are looking for a lot of awesome content to play around with and I definitely recommend going and checking out this mod. It won an award for a reason. It definitely earns a spot on this countdown. So I had to decide for number two, which it would be a mod that I really, really loved, but is potentially less well known versus a mod that is extremely well known in the armor community. And I also do like it. So I picked that one for number two, and that is Battle Royale. Battle Royale was really one of the earliest mods in Armor 3. Not the very first mod or anything by any means, but it was definitely one of the biggest mods that kind of went out and around and kind of grabbed hold of the armor community and it was one of the first mods that I ever played. The object of the multiplayer game mode is simple. You have to survive and kill every other player. It's essentially a free-for-all except it's on a large scale and you're constantly looking for ammo, weapons, and gear while being pushed closer and closer to the people around you. This is another one of those simple mods that is an absolute blast to play, and when I started looking for servers again after I re-downloaded it, I was getting pretty excited when I got on that plane and had to drop and now survive while killing all the other players that I saw. Now winning this game mode might seem kind of easy, but it is actually fairly challenging. Not only do you have to quickly scavenge up any supplies of ammunition or gear that you find before the other players, but you have to traverse the immense Armor 3 landscapes. It's not like you're in a super close quarters combat. Depending on what map you play, you'll have to watch everything and everywhere at all times. Though this mod is well past its glory days, you can definitely find some servers still running. I found one just a few days before the, I posted this video. So I definitely recommend going out and potentially re-downloading this mod if you've played it before or downloading it for the first time. You can find a game and have a lot of fun doing it. Oh boy guys, here at number one, like I said, might not be the most well known just compared to the other ones, but it is definitely huge. It is a mission mod that is the most put together, the most unique, unique is a big one, that is completely different than any mission that I've ever played, and the mod is called a Baphomet. So the basis for the mission is the whole world has been covered in darkness for 10 years by essentially a hell portal that has been releasing ungodly things onto the earth. And now it is up to the Knights Templar, one of the last remaining holy groups on earth, to go and shut down the hell portal while fighting demons and zombies in a terrifying world the entire time. If you couldn't tell already, the mod is dark and it is sinister. I didn't realize how absolutely terrified I was till after I finished the mission. I played it with one other person. You can play with it up to four people, and I highly recommend grabbing as many friends as you can. I do not recommend playing this by yourself or late at night. Beware, nightmares may come. I won't spoil the mission too much for you guys, but it took us about three hours straight to work through all of the objectives, and I still missed a side objective, by the way, when I finished it. 
in terms of difficulty, it is not the easiest mod you will ever play. However, you will not be sucked into a hell fiery hell portal at random. So it will put up a decent challenge, but you should be able to get through it at a fairly decent pace while enjoying your time and enjoying the amazing work of art really that this mod is. Some of the objectives throughout the mission, there's about a dozen I want to say, maybe about 10. Some include investigating a crash site as well as gathering satanic artifacts and voodoo witchcraft things that is super satanic and again, like I said, really dark. I never had a sense of pure joy after finishing a mission until I finished this one. Not because it's so bad, but because I enjoyed it so much. Oh yeah, and because it's kind of terrifying. Did I mention that already? I highly recommend checking out all of these mods. There will be a link in the description to these mods so you can get to them nice and quick. Makes things easier, I'm sure. So we are getting to the end here. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Follow us on Twitch. I will see you guys later.